Good, so let's start with uh, our first speaker, uh, Philip Williams. Uh, as I mentioned, he is uh, the CEO of Orineo, a uh, Belgian producer of uh, bio-based hard resins. Uh, Orineo already managed to design and produce uh, and market fully bio-based uh, thermoset binders, and is now looking uh, for new hard bio-based polymers in the Champion project. Using bio-based thermosetting resins as a case study, Philip will explain uh, his company's philosophy, uh, which is developing bio-based and harmless materials that are not uh, exhausting our planet resources. Philip, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Ankel, for uh, this introduction. Uh, I think I will start by sharing my screen. So. Is it okay? Yes, perfect. Okay. So, uh, well, yeah, thank you for this nice, nice introduction. And indeed, uh, as Angel explained, we are a small SME and we are active in the uh, development, production, and sales of bio based thermosetting resins. And uh, it's a little bit with the experience that we acquired in designing these things, uh, the philosophy that we are following, and uh, also some of the benefits that maybe you can have with such a product for the environment. And that's exactly what I would like to share with you uh, in, in this webinar. Um, so um, the first thing you need if you want to go to, let's say, to, to go for a transition, um, the first thing you need is a good vision. So this is the vision that we share at uh, Orineo. Um, and it's, um, well, it's, it's, it's kind of maybe a little bit countercurrent in some way. We believe really in, in the possibility to have uh, abundance instead of uh, scarcity of resources. We are today always confronted with messages of scarcity, shortage in food, shortage in raw materials. Um, but let's say that we are going a little bit in another direction. We think that if we do it in a smart way, we can have an abundance of resources available for feed, food, and materials. And if you want to do that, well, you need to be uh, very effective in the way you're circulating the materials. So that means that you always regenerate your feedstock uh, in the most efficient way. And uh, the other thing is that we have to make sure that you are not leaving any negative footprint for the next generation. So um, whatever we do, it, it should be, let's say, harmless for people and environment. And th that is a little bit the vision that we, that we have at, uh, at uh, Ovineo. And that's the background against which we are always going to design. And so now that we know where we want to go, um, well, then it's possible to have the road to go to that destination. And that's a little bit what we are going to explain in coming uh, 15 minutes. So it's an optimistic message that I want to share. Um, we really believe that there is a good solution for the future uh, if we are working against, uh, well, according to this, uh, this strict uh, rules and vision. First thing, I'd like to share with you a few quotes that I pick up left and right. Um, and the first one is very interesting. It, it says Apache quote, but if you would Google that, you will find uh, that probably uh, a lot of other people also are claiming the same, the same quote. So I found that Apache was pretty nice. So that's why I left it as um, the credit to, uh, to them. Um, but what is important there for me is, let's say, this, this controversial way, like we borrow it from our children. Um, so that means that what we are doing today is, in fact, affecting the life of the next generation. And we have to take care of that. And the most important word of the whole quote for me is borrow. And that, that is really one of the concepts that I'd like to bring forward. Um, just saying that whatever feedstock you're, let's say, sourcing from 
Mother Earth, it's just something that you're borrowing. You don't own feedstock, you just borrow it from nature, from, uh, let's say, mineral resources that are available. And borrowing means that you need to bring it back. You need to give it back. Uh, it's not just taking and keeping it forever. So that means that you have a second quote that explains a little bit what you're going to do with this borrowing. Um, that came from a, a book that I just read. I think I finished it two weeks ago from um, a Zen Buddhist monk, Japanese monk. Um, well, I'm not sure I will share all the principles of that book, but uh, that quote was for me very interesting. And it says that, well, we as human, we are basically we creators. And um, if we don't have shelter, if we don't have clothes uh, to protect ourselves against the environment and against the elements, we, we are really weak. Um, and we need tools in order to be able to, to, to do, the, let's say, originally the hunting and all these things. So um, that means that to survive as a species, human need to adapt a little bit the environment to the requirements that we have. So adapting means that you're going to affect the environment. But what is very important in that, uh, in that respect uh, is that you must use it, but not abuse the environment. So yes, we should be able to adjust things of nature and what we get as resources, as long as you are not destroying it in a kind of permanent way, or let's say exhaust everything that we have. So we have to do it in a smart way, this adjustment to the environment. But it's something that, that, that we have to accept um, that whatever we do in order to survive, we need to make changes to the environment. And that brings me to the third quote. And, um, very proudly, it's a quote that we used, I think, um, in, a, in a seminar uh, a few months ago. That means that we need to design respectfully with nature. So use the nature to think about new products, new materials, but do it in a respect, respectful way um, to nature. So that means that you're not going to introduce toxic components or persistent products in the environment. So you try to preserve it as much as possible so that you can also always tap again in these new resources that nature is making available to us. And I'd like to, well, it's not a purpose to really present the products that we, that we are uh, making at Torineo, but uh, well, it's a slide and it, it happens to be the example that we use for uh, our binder. Um, so that's, I think the, the only slide referring to our binder. Um, it's called Toribon, by the way. And it just explained the principle that um, this binder is, is, is on, on atomic level, just carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, and we are just borrowing it from nature. So it starts, of course, with plant-based materials, so solar energy, water, and CO2. That gives you the crops and the, the plants that we, that we are using. Out of these uh, resources, we are using vegetable oil and some other plant-based ingredients. We need some energy uh, add to that, of course. It comes in our plant where we make our thermosetting resin component A and B. And then it goes to our uh, customers. Customers making different materials like, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, particle board, uh, OSB panels, uh, high pressure laminates, uh, composite materials, uh, coatings, all these things. From there, it goes to the consumer. That's still quite linear. And then, of course, the first circularity, it's the what, what I call the recycle, reuse, repair loop. So that means extending the life of all these materials. Um, and that is possible, of course, and there are different ways to do that, also with products including Oibond. Um, but you can't do that forever because at a certain moment you can't repair it anymore. Uh, so then comes the real closing of the cycle to our opinion, and that is bringing back the carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen back to nature. 
basically back to CO2 level, which is something that uh, is needed by the fresh plants to grow. And also going to the soil maintenance, uh, soil or water quality maintenance, so that the plants have the right substrate to grow on and have the right nutrients in complement to the CO2 and the water um, that, that, that they need. So that is the real closing of the loop, like we see it. It's really an atomic level uh, that we can do it. So our ambition is, um, let's say, high. We, 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 we have an ambition of 100% and, and, and no compromise uh, ambition. And the, the first step in that ambitious plan that we see um, is, of course, to go from the petrochemical materials where you have a CO2 release of, let's say, the the stored, long time stored CO2 is suddenly released in, in, in gigantic quantities. Um, and we should switch to the plant based resources where the CO2 is captured in the materials. Um, that's one step, but there is a second, um, as important, even maybe even more important step is that we have to go from the situation that we have today with a lot of toxic products, um, especially also in the resin business we are in, and we have to go to non-toxic um, uh, products. So that the symbols or let's say new things that we have developed ourselves as a difference compared to the, uh, the toxic uh, pictograms. And we want to do that at 100%, and that's exactly what we propose. So our products are 100% bio-based and non-toxic. So once that you have done that, you have to, to communicate that to the consumer. And there I have some, some problems with a lot of things that are happening today in this so-called transition to the bioeconomy. First, you have a lot of hybrids. Um, um, hybrids in the sense, products which are partially bio-based. Uh, so X percent is bio-based, Y percent, is still fossil um, hybrids with resin uh, resins which are said to be bio-based but are only partially bio-based um, and, and hybrids are okay for me as long as it is just a temporary uh, situation just good to initiate some transition uh, i think we all will agree that in the future if you look at the cars the hybrid cars will probably also disappear and be completely re replaced by the full electric uh, zero emission cars. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably the way that always goes for uh, hybrid uh, solutions. But it's something that can be confusing to the consumer. Another thing is maybe you heard about the system of mass balance carbon allocation. That's, um, I'm not going to go in detail of that, but it's a really accounting system on um, carbon which might be of biological origin and that can be allocated in a certain way to end products. Um, and if you would measure it, you wouldn't find probably a, a, a huge amount of bio-based carbon in the product, but by this accounting system, it can be marketed and proposed as, as almost 100%. It's very, very confusing, this stuff you really, uh, need to be careful when communicating that. And then the last thing is that picture on the top right, um, where you see probably only an abstract of all the possible certification you can get for bio-based or environmentally friendly uh, products. Uh, it's, it, it starts to be really, really confusing. Um, and um, yeah, well, I think that um, the Albin will, will, will speak about the create to create, which for me is probably the most simple to understand and the most exhaustive of, of them all, and, and therefore a very good system to, uh, to do that. But it's quite confusing sometimes regarding all this, uh, this certification. So I want to come to the end um, and uh, just show you a picture illustrating the vision of our vision. Uh, so it's a 100% plant-based, safe, and 100% back-to-cradle uh, system, where indeed the environment can be tailored 
as you see, this is also a managed uh, environment picture. Um, it can be tailored to our needs, but still respecting the diversity of the environment. And as really uh, ends, I um, want to share an example of what, what it means going to the 100%. Then take a wood panel. Uh, in this case, this is a panel made with sunflower uh, stalks and uh, Oribond as binder. But assume any kind of wood panel and a normal standard commercial available product may contain something rounded figures like 90 kilograms of wood and 10 kilograms of a thermal setting resin. And that thermal setting resin might be like 30% bio-based and 70% is fossil, persistent, and ecotoxic. That's the reality that we have today. Suppose if you are switching to a 100% bio-based uh, binder, which is from renewable resource and non-ecotoxic. What, what is it meaning? And the impact is much, much bigger than just this 10 kilogram, um, it's this 10 kilogram of binder, because in this case, you have like 93 kilograms of biomass, the 90 kilograms of wood, and the 3 kilograms of bio based feedstock in the thermal setting resin, which is actually lost for the biogenic cycle. You can normally not return in a safe way the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, whatever that you have in your biomass because you have this 7 kilogram of persistent ecotoxic binder included in your system. If you go to the second route, well, the 100 kilogram of the whole panel, the 10, 90 kilogram wood and 10 kilogram of the binder can be safely returned to the environment, to the biogenic cycles and can be reused. All these atoms can be reused to make new materials. And that's exactly what we want to achieve with uh, our, uh, our developments. And that's exactly our vision of the future. Uh, just to explain, Champion project and you see that here also, that's what Champion is going to do. You see, you see my cursor, I hope. So the, in green, that's what Champion is going to do. And you see also these elements of save by design, circular by design coming into, um, into the concept of Champion. And that's why we also uh, are very keen in collaborating and, and being part of this consortium. So um, that's it. Uh, I think I'm just almost in time. Thank you for attention and ready to take the questions.